Welcome to this Total War Warhammer 2 Queen in the Crone head-to-head -head Let's Play. I'm Wheels, and I'll be playing as the Blood Queen of Harganeth, Crone Hellebron. Malevolent, malicious, and obsessed with murder and gore, Hellebron brings bloody fury to the Dark Elves. And I'm Guy, and I'm taking control of Alario the Radiant, aka the Ever Queen and High Priestess of Isha. High Elves adore her, and for good reason. Unlike Ever Queens before her, she takes an active role in the defense of Ulthorn, urging an end to petty infighting to ensure the integrity of an Ulthoran for the Azur. In this new Lord Pack, players will be able to pit these mortal enemies against each other in both the Eye of the Vortex and Mortal Empires campaigns. Guy and I will once again be at each other's throats in this head-to-head -head multiplayer Let's Play. You join me on turn 7, where I've managed to wrestle control of the entire province of the Road of Skulls. Crone Hellebron has pushed into the territory of the Deadwood Sentinels and sparked a territory war with her brethren. My first action will be to level up Hellebron after her success in taking the Black Pillar. I'm going to be further upgrading her abilities as a dreaded slaver. Rank 2 gains an extra 12% of casualties captured post-battle for my burgeoning slave market. And those slaves are going to be the bloody lubricant for my unending assault on Ulfwar. Crone Hellebron may appear to be young and beautiful, but it is only the ritual of the Death Knight that keeps her from withering into her true form. With the blood sacrifice of a multitude of slaves on the streets of Harganeth, Hellebron's beauty and power will be restored as she emerges from a pool of her victim's gore. The powers of the Death Knight are not everlasting though, and as time marches on, Hellebron's guise of youth will begin to diminish into her true form, causing massive penalties to her effectiveness on the battlefield, and also to the running of her nation. So, without further ado, let's begin our assault on Dargoth and capture some new slaves for our sacrifice. As this is a head-to-head -head campaign, Guy will be taking control of my enemies. He'll be even more unpredictable and difficult to battle. The city of Dargoth is mine, and with it an enormous bounty of slaves with which to enact my machinations. It's time to unleash the slaves from their cages and begin the hellish fury of the Death Knight that we might bathe in Cain's bloody splendour. The people of Harganeth now have leave to unleash their primal instincts upon the bounty of slaves we have provided. Those who are not sated will assemble in a blood voyage to the shores of Ulthuar to appease their lust for death. An addiction is never satisfied by equal measures though. We'll have to provide more slaves each time we carry out another death knight. On the next turn, the Blood Voyage is ready to set sail, and if this were a single player campaign, they would only listen to our demands if Ulfwan had been purged of those vapid High Elves. But in a head-to-head -head campaign, I have complete control. The Blood Voyage is incredibly powerful, with unbreakable units, an 80% upkeep reduction, and a 30% increase in campaign movement range. However, whilst it remains, our faction will be incredibly unpopular with High Elves, for obvious reasons and the army itself will never replenish, meaning any damage done is permanent. Let's send our band of marauders to their goal and start to bring the wrath of Cain on the gleaming towers of Ulfwar. Enough wheels. Let's have a look at my campaign so far. I started here at the Game Vale and succeeded in cleansing the Druki in my immediate vicinity, pushing them out past the Phoenix Gate with the help of my friends from the forest. Alariel's affinity for nature allows her to open ancient portals to the forest ways of the world, granting her access to units usually only accessible to wood elves. Using my prestigious position as the widely adored Ever Queen of Ulthoran, I've started spending my influence to create coalitions and calm inter Azur conflicts. My first priority is encouraging the egos of Ulthoran to put their differences aside and drive the Dark Elves out. I'm not just being a xenophobe, Alariel's Defender of Ulthoran mechanic incentivizes her matriarchal protection of these sacred lands. The more of Ulthuan under High Elf control, the more its people trust the Everqueen. In the first case, that means setting a war coordination target here at the Tower of Lycian, where I believe Prince Tyrion has been taking handouts on the side, rather than putting his people first. In the campaign, this translates to a variety of positive or negative effects to various aspects of the running of my faction. Most important is that no external forces breach the inner ring of Ulthuan. The effects that will have on the infrastructure of my kingdom will leave the gleaming towers of Avalon in the shadows of chaos. The purge of the Druki from Northern Ulthuan has been slow but steady as we begin to oust the Scourge of Cain from the Outer Ring. There is yet more cause for concern though, as it seems that wretched, rancid hag Hellebron is dredging up more abominations for her trespasses on our lands. But I couldn't possibly prepare for the devastation that is about to unfold. 
It's now turn 29 and we're still reeling from Wheel's blood voyage, desecrating the lands of Ulthoran. Though our friends have recolonized some of the ruins left in his wake, he managed to crack the inner ring of Ulthoran by taking it the Unicorn Gate, and with it, its sizable garrison. We'll have to round up our strongest warriors and call on our most loyal allies to take it back. Unfortunately, by siding with Tyrannoch, the faction Wheel's focus during his invasion, I've put myself at odds with my most valuable neighbour, Illyrian, who they are currently at war with. This leaves a particularly bitter taste, because I used my hard-earned influence to secure this alliance. My most fearsome rivals have taken a key strategic location on my very doorstep, and my fellow Azur continue to squabble. At the very least, we can keep our own followers contented by utilising Alariel's power over nature. Whenever Alariel visits a friendly settlement, those lucky enough to witness her presence are blessed with a variety of bonuses for a 10 turn duration, including growth, public order, and a corruption reduction, certainly useful as she gallivants around Ulthoran, protecting and uniting her people. Back to the Road of Skulls, and we can see that Hellebron's iron grip over her homeland has started to weaken as her powers have faded, revealing her wrinkled mortality to all the world. We do not have the luxury of Marathi's secrets, keeping her young and beautiful without the need for constant sacrifice, and thus we call for another death knight. If we wish to end the eternal cycle of aging and sacrifice, we must provide a substantial offering to the bloody-handed god, who demands from us his tribute. If we manage to take control of Marathi's capital, we can pilfer her secrets of immortality, raising the minimum level we can fall to on the death knight bar. The same effect can also be achieved by occupying the home of our most hated rival Alariel, the Gaian Vale. By destroying her grove and erecting our twisted monuments, Cain will surely be pleased. In the last few turns, the diminishing loyalty of our Blood Voyage captain saw them turn against us. Driven mad by their thirst for blood, they threw themselves at our newly captured Unicorn Gate and were swiftly dealt with. It's time to prepare for another assault on Ulfwan then. First, Let's upgrade our torture posts into fully fledged fighting pits, that we might recruit one of the new units at our disposal. The Sisters of Slaughter. These crazed gladiators are expert damage dealers, and will tear a high elf shield wall asunder. The only thing left to do now is to unleash the slaves from their cages, and once again revel in the glory of the Death Knight. Next turn, and my blood voyage is here, ready to enact its brutal fury on the Isles of the Azure. I've only just noticed, however, that Guy's faction is in control of the Shrine of Cain. We cannot allow these contemptuous cowards to wield the mighty power of the God of Murder. I must have the blade for myself. Let us see how the Everqueen's warriors deal with true destruction, and this time, she will have the pleasure of my company as well. Two full stacks loom on the horizon and I don't feel strong enough to take them on. To make matters worse, the Illyrians, who won't talk to me since they formed an alliance with Tyrannoc, just smashed a full stack into the Dark Elf controlled Unicorn Gate without coordinating with me, and got absolutely devastated. I'm no closer to uniting the Azur as they war and squabble between themselves. Defender my plans the lie in ruins throw. and my children are in grave danger. A mother does whatever it takes to protect her children, and the Everqueen is the mortal embodiment of Isha, mother goddess of the elven race. I have no choice in the matter. I must elect a champion to take on the vile burden of the Shrine of Cain, the Widowmaker. The Sword of Cain will grant me an eye-bulging amount of armor piercing, melee attack, and ward save stats. It also grants access to a devastating bound ability in the form of a vortex spell that decimates even large groups of armored troops. The Vortex even inflicts temporary madness on impacted soldiers, causing them to rampage out of control, ignoring orders as Cain's thirst for blood overcomes them. However, this level of malevolent darkness cannot merely lurk on the fringes. It seeps into the very fabric of your soul until everything you once held dear is lost to you. As the strength of the sword grows, its tendrils strengthen their grip on the wielder, sending them into a bloody fury. The overwhelmingly powerful battlefield effects 
bring with them massive penalties to your campaign, starting with a minor cost of public order and diplomacy, and tumbling ever more into madness as the sword feeds on the blood of your victims. You will have opportunities to throw away the sword, but let its power drive you for too long and you will find yourself bound to its corruption, until you are finally defeated in battle and the Widowmaker claims a new host. What news? Our preparation time is over. Wills is dangerously close to our gates. If he manages to take the Widowmaker, then surely all is lost. I've had to be hasty in my recruitment. My over-reliance on ranged units means that the superior Dark Elf infantry will have no trouble breaching my front line. Fortunately, I've been able to grab a large contingent of Dryads to act as a tar pit for Wheels' forces as we rain fire upon them. I've got two powerful new units to bring into the fight. The Sisters of Avalon's armor-piercing magical damage will destroy most targets easily, and their brilliant blue flames will light up the skies and purge the flesh from their bones. The Shadow Warriors will serve a different purpose. As master ambushers, these units can deploy almost anywhere, stay hidden in all terrain and fire whilst running. I will combine them with the Heralds of the Wind Regiment of Renown to forge an infuriating skirmisher vanguard to keep Wheels frustrated and distract him from my less mobile ranged units. Scouting Wheels' Druki hordes, he's packing both a Black Dragon and a War Hydra, so the Scions of Mathalan Regiment, with their beefy anti-large stats, combined with a damage protection aura, will come in extremely handy when backing up my handmaiden, who is a master at felling large foes in order to protect the Radiant Everqueen. Alario, Everqueen, driving back the dark. Enough stalling! We know what needs to be done. For the Azur. For Avalon. For our home. only just scratched the surface of all the content in the Queen of the Crone, so make sure you join us on Total War Live on the 23rd for more gameplay. Pre-order now for 10% off. Like and share if you enjoy the video and think others might benefit from this, and of course subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.